Our thinking about energy tends to be very biased, very sloppy, and actually very anti-human. So very biased, very sloppy, and very anti-human. So I want to share with you how I came to this conclusion because it's a, it's a strong conclusion, but I think if I'm right, it means that we really need to think about energy in a different way because people in this room are trying to influence energy decisions, and if you influence them in the wrong way, you can do bad things, and if you influence them in the right way, you can do good things. So let's talk about um, bias. So one thing I noticed was that, for example, when people talked about different forms of energy, very consistently, when they talked about certain forms of energy, namely fossil fuels and nuclear, and, and sometimes hydro, they would mostly talk about negatives. And when they talked about other forms of energy, namely solar and wind, they would mostly talk about uh, positives. So, for example, if you take nuclear, this is a typical kind of statement about nuclear. So it's saying, like, nuclear is not safe, and people talk about how oh, nuclear is really unsafe, and you have lots of articles about the lack of safety of nuclear power. But then I, I wanted to look at, okay, well, what is the actual evidence? What sources of energy actually are the safest per unit of energy generated? And then it turns out nuclear is by far the, for, uh, the safest form of energy ever created. And then I looked into physics, and it made a lot of sense as to why. So it seemed really unfair that we would talk about nuclear safety as this big issue, but we wouldn't talk about the greater safety issues from other uh, technologies. I heard um, Elon Musk the other day on his, his conference call talk about how upset he was, how deaths from um, automation in self-driving cars are reported too much, and he said this is really unfair because you're not reporting the deaths from uh, you know, manual driving, and I thought that's a good point, but I think he and others need to apply this to everything. We really need to try to be as unbiased as possible. Um, another example where you see this come up is in something like uh, wildlife issues. So people will say, well, I'm, I really hate oil because oil spills can hurt wildlife, and don't you remember Deepwater Horizon, and I can never tolerate that kind of bird, seeing those birds die again. But then I look into the evidence, and, well, I mean, wind turbines by their nature are, like, very, very good at killing birds. And that doesn't mean that they're bad necessarily, but that's just a fact about their nature. So if we claim to care about wildlife, we need to look at all the different technologies. We can't just look at the ones we're predisposed to dislike and say they're bad, and then the ones we're disposed to like and say they're good. Another issue is like groundwater you know, from industrial processes. So you hear, we hear about fracking and groundwater, but we don't hear about the more dangerous practices involved in, say, mining for solar, uh, you know, solar panels and wind turbines. So we don't hear uh, we're just, there, there's this systematic uh, bias. Another one is with the uh, CO2 issue. It's really important to look at the influence of CO2 on our world, but part of that is we, we have to be open to both potentially positive and potentially negative things, and there's very, very strong evidence that increasing the amount of CO2 has fertilized plants all around the world and has led to massive, massive global greening. This shows general changes in leaf area, including places where human beings are doing nothing but adding CO2. So plant growth really matters. So when we talk about CO2, we need to talk about this. It doesn't mean that it's decisive. It might be that the warming is a, big, is a way bigger problem. But if we don't talk about it, we can't get to the right uh, decision. 